Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, a rare sight in New Mexico for decades, are now thriving here, thanks to a highly successful program carried out by the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. Daryl Waybright has been the department's big game program coordinator for 17 years, and it's his job to oversee the reestablishment of big game animals in appropriate places around the state. We didn't have any uh, bighorn on this uh, mountain for, for decades, and uh, for an example on Wheeler Peak, um, so it was identified as, a, as an excellent habitat and some place we desired to have uh, bighorn sheep. That was 15 years ago. Now, Wheeler Peak is at carrying capacity. That translates into too many sheep and not enough habitat, including food, for the mountaintop to handle. Game and Fish Bighorn Sheep Biologist Elise Goldstein says they are working with two goals in mind. Reduce the population in Wheeler Peak um, to bring the numbers down. And then um, going to the dry Cimarron, we're actually trying to expand the range that those dry Cimarron sheep are using. Um, so, so it has an additional goal of um, benefiting that recipient herd. And then in Turkey Creek, we, um, we want to augment numbers in one area of Turkey Creek, but we also want to, we radio collar almost all the sheep we send, and we'd like to add additional radio collars to that herd so we can continue tracking them, monitoring the herd health. The dry Cimarron and Turkey Creek are in opposite corners of the state. The department wants the sheep to continue to adapt to new regions. That requires keeping lambs and ewes together on these relocations. We're putting them into a brand new area. They don't know where the grocery store is. They don't know where the bad places are. So th the more you have together, the more ice are out looking for predators and, and you take advantage of those older ewes and, uh, that, that have experience of finding and uh, being wary of, of things so that you know, you, if, if lambs are separated from their mothers, they've been uh, they're, they're at least a month old. Most of them are two months or more old. And so it's critical that those, for those lamb survival to be with their, their mothers and not get separated. First, there's a certain technique the department employs to bait the sheep into the nets. It begins by dropping gear into the Tau Ski Valley. We're going to take this net up to the Tau Ski Valley and the helicopter is going to fly the net and all of the uh, associated trapping gear into the wilderness and there'll be a small crew there in the wilderness to receive the net and then they're going to set it up and uh, get it prepared and it'll be set up for about two days. Um, we've been baiting a site for the past two years with salt because for some reason that we can't explain, bighorn sheep really crave salt. So uh, hopefully once the net's set over it, they'll still want to go under it for that salt. And if the sheep don't come readily, biologists use an unconventional technique to lead them. In the form of uh, potato chips, which we always discourage the public from doing, but for trapping we break our own rules. Once the net drops, the biologists work to calm the sheep and ready them for transport by helicopter to the base of the Tau Ski Valley. It's pretty exciting uh, that it's a pretty simple operation. Everything's pretty peaceful. The net's up there. The sheep are grazing and eating the salt and bait that we have underneath. And the, the trappers are outside the net, uh, generally 50 to 80 yards or so away from the net uh, to give the sheep some space. And then we pull the, the cord, the net drops, and immediately the sheep are uh, very excited, they jump up and down. It's kind of a popcorn thing. It's the nets bouncing around as they get, and then as they get tangled up, and as we get on them and, and uh, secure them so they don't uh, hurt themselves, we blindfold or hobble them, and uh, then they're they're safe from injuring themselves. We get them out of the net and uh, then process them. The helicopter comes in with the sheep, and there was a crew of probably around 20, and we all have our own jobs, and uh, we'll run over, get the, the sheep out of the bags, put them on a stretcher, take them over to the weighing site, get them weighed, um, and then uh, take them over, let the, there's a vet down below. She'll look at the, the sheep and give them an okay. The role of making sure the animals are handled properly falls to a team of dedicated veterinarians like Gene Ross. They're collared, blood is drawn, the injections are given, animals are checked over, multiple temperatures are taken. They're cooled if they're overheated. And then we'll load them into either a horse trailer or these custom crates we have in the back of the truck. 
um, Winston the horse trailer. They'll be try we'll keep him in the shade, and they're usually pretty calm. They like they seem to like trailers. Ross says they are keenly aware when an animal should stay behind. If we have any animal that's in question, we often will take them back to the um, capture site rather than the release site. The stress of that and. Most of the releases go without any kind of a, a hitch at all because if we've got a compromised animal, we will take care of that before we, we do any kind of release. For habitat specialist Mark Olson, the experience is rewarding from start to finish. The final phase is releasing the big game animals in new territory. This year, 25 will go up to the Dry Cimarron area, which is east of Raton, north of Clayton area. And then the rest, if we get more, any more than 25, then we'll take those sheep down to uh, Turkey Creek down in the southern part of the state. Turkey Creek is in the Gila wilderness. Daryl can see future opportunities for both the sheep and sportsmen. We know that that herd is uh, possibly available then for uh, uh, producing enough animals that we can hunt in the future and, and uh, repropagate propagate in other areas as well. And the program has been so successful you can already draw for a hunt on Wheeler Peak and in the Pecos Wilderness. There are currently 10 ram licenses in Pecos. One of those is a youth hunter only. And there are four public licenses in Wheeler Peak. Ross has nothing but praise for the project. It's um, a very well organized project every time I've been here. And um, it runs very smoothly and efficiently. And kudos to the department. The project's success depends on a lot of dedicated people. At this rate in coming years, we could see sheep return to virtually every area they used to roam a century ago. And as the bighorn sheep are set free to roam in their new home, so will a lot of other New Mexicans follow. And that means you, as the bighorns continue to be reintroduced to their traditional range, we hope you too get the chance to see one of these elegant animals roam as part of New Mexico's wildlife.